While running tests on the ZX brake after I installed it, I noticed that the power supply driving the Z-axis servo would click every time the servo drove the spindle payload downward. In this video, I've overlaid a video of the spindle motion and a view of the cabinet where you can hear the clicking happening over the Windows software that lets you examine things like the current on the motor. You can see how as it goes down the current spikes one way or the other depending on which way it's moving. But you can also hear this click and you can see a little light come on in the power supply. I would learn later that that clicking wasn't actually an overload condition but rather regen coming back from the servo as the mass fell and it was normal operation for the power supply to click like that. Uh, unfortunately that did not keep me from completely disassembling the z-axis and spending a lot of time learning exactly how it works. Here you can see as I move the carriage up and down how it seems to bind as it goes downward. I uh, figured out later that there's something called a drag brake down at the bottom bearing of the ball screw and that's what was causing that. The intent there is to help take some of the load off of the servo because the payload weighs so much but I didn't understand that at the time. Getting the last screw out by myself was pretty challenging and I almost botched it. That Z-axis is actually pretty heavy and I can't hold it with one hand and unscrew the last screw with the other. So I stuck a piece of wood in there to kind of act as a second hand to help hold it. Um, it was sort of precariously balanced there and you can see here in a minute when I pull the screw out how I almost lose control of the thing. At each stage of disassembly, I'm trying to figure out what's binding, what's keeping it from moving smoothly. And as you can see here, I'm still not having any luck. I almost can't move it at all in the downward direction. I have to try just turning the ball screw, which moves but still binds in the other direction a little bit more than I'd like. So I keep disassembling it looking for whatever it is that's binding. Uh, not noticing there at the bottom of the column, you can sort of see the drag break. It's here that I realize it's the ball screw that's binding, not the linear rails at all. So I disassemble the rest of it and pull those out. And that's when I notice this little contraption on the bottom. So this is the drag break. Inside, I'm not sure what it's got, maybe some kind of rubber material. And you can feel that it'll move fairly smoothly in one direction and then bind up in the other direction. In the end, uh, after talking to Avid, it turns out you don't really need it, especially if you've got a Z-axis brake, which is what led to this whole project. So I took it out. Unfortunately, that meant that the bottom end of the ball screw wasn't going to be supported by a bearing, but Avid said that wasn't actually a problem. And I think they're right. The speeds aren't very high on the ball screw, so it doesn't end up whipping around. It's just not that long. I actually assembled and disassembled this many times. I noticed that the bottom of the ball screw would shift over to the right as the carriage traveled up toward the top. And that meant that something was misaligned between the ball screw nut and the top uh, thrust bearing. I could not figure out what it was. Uh, I talked to Avid. They said that sometimes you need to shim either the carriage, the, the ball screw nut or the top thrust bearing up there to get it to line up properly. I wasn't 100% convinced that that's what it needed because it was moving left to right rather than up and down. 
but I spent a long time shimming it with different thicknesses trying to get it to run as smooth as possible. I can just hear my friends who sew screaming in agony as I cut brass shim stock with scissors. In the end, it seemed like the shim stock didn't make much difference, but rather the order in which I tightened the linear bearings onto that plate is what mattered the most to get it to move without shifting. Putting the ZX back on was actually a lot easier than taking it off. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any video of that. Basically just held it in one hand with a screw uh, through one of the holes in the other and that was enough to let me guide it into place and get that first screw set. Then it was just a matter of putting the rest of them in and torquing them to the right amount. Then reinstalling the brake and servo and running it through some tests. After satisfying myself that it was working correctly, I had to reassemble everything and remount the spindle. I also spent some time adjusting the z-axis limit sensor and making sure that worked correctly. Here you can see Linux CNC running through the homing procedure. Then came the task of mounting the spindle motor. I did this by lowering the z-axis to about the right height so that I could just sort of lean the spindle motor up against it while it was resting on the table. This allowed me to get a couple of screws in the top and then I could raise it up enough so that it was sort of hanging from those two screws and then I could fit the rest of the screws in. And then I just needed a quick test to make sure everything was still running smoothly and I was done. And that about wraps up this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.